Hmm. In 1907, um, the theft of the Irish crown jewels occurred here uh, at Dublin Castle in July of, of 1907. Um, at the time, the jewels were under the care of a man named Arthur Vickers. He was, uh, really he had made it his life's ambition to reach this position of, of chief genealogist here in Ireland. And for over 10 years, he'd actually petitioned the authorities here in Dublin to get the position. Then in the early 1900s, there was another coup for him because his offices were moved to the Bedford Tower, which really was, is one of the best appointed buildings in anywhere here in Dublin city centre. So by this stage, he'd really reached the pinnacle of his career. He'd also surrounded himself with artefacts, very valuable books, and it was kind of, uh, it was well known that he was always keen to show people, show off uh, the books that he, he was uh, a keeper of, and also the Irish crown jewels, which he specifically had moved from Weir's jeweller to his tower in the early 1900s because he wanted to be the custodian of them. He employed to work with them a few different men. I suppose most notably was a man named Francis Shackleton, who would have been a younger brother of the Arctic explorer, Ernest Shackleton. Now, by all accounts, uh, Francis Shackleton was uh, something of a, a man about town. He mixed in uh, very elite social circles. Um, he was granted access to all the, the well-to-do or the, the notable clubs in London at the time but he was a man of questionable character and as we'll find out during the theft of the jewels he became the main suspect along with an accomplice um, who I'll mention later on. The jewels were discovered stolen um, in July uh, on the 6th of July 1907 the office of arms that was the the name of the the building she her name was Mary Farrell she came to clean the the building that morning and she discovered that the door of the strong room, which was a kind of a large safe in the tower, was open. Um, because of this, she notified the messenger in the building and the messenger then told Arthur Vickers. Then later that day, um, Arthur Vickers asked the messenger to leave a golden collar down in the safe in the building. He went down and he discovered that the safe was open. He told Vickers, Vickers came down to inspect himself and sure enough, the safe was unlocked. He opened it, he took out a box, opened the box, and it was empty. Inside should have been the Irish Crown Jewels, also known as the Star of St. Patrick. Now those jewels today would be worth several million euro, and they were the property of the King of England, King Edward VII, because they were royal jewels. Um, the, the jewel was called the Star of St. Patrick. It was about the size of the palm of my hand, and it consisted of 50 Brazilian diamonds, a shamrock of emeralds, and then a ruby cross on a background of blue enamel. Now, upon the discovery of the theft, an inquiry was launched, or an investigation by the Dublin authorities. But because they were royal jewels, uh, the King of England, Edward VII, he insisted that Scotland Yard carry out a parallel investigation. So a man, a detective, John Kane, he was sent over to Dublin to investigate the theft of the jewels. But during his investigations into the theft, he discovered that Vickers and Shackleton, uh, well, uh, they were something of a homosexual ring operating here in the castle, and that Shackleton was having an affair with the King of England's brother-in-law, a man named the Duke of Argyll. When the King, Edward VII, found out about this, he was worried that if they pressed Shackleton and if they charged him with the theft of the jewels, he may go public with this information. And this would cause a, a scandal which had the potential to rock the monarchy at the time. So, nobody was ever charged with the theft and the whole thing was swept under the carpet. And Vickers felt a sense of utter betrayal at Shackleton uh, possibly having stolen the jewels. And for the rest of his life, he was bitter about this because in the end, the British and Irish authorities made Vickers the fall guy for the whole thing. They blamed him because he was custodian of the jewels and they claimed he had been negligent in their care. And in the end, he was fired um, a year after the theft of the jewels. He lost his state pension and he then retired to the west of Ireland to County Clare. And he really never got over the theft of the jewels and being made a scapegoat for the whole thing. 
and those jewels are still missing today. They've never been recovered. There's still a £1,000 reward on offer for their successful recovery. And it's really um, one of the great unsolved mysteries of 20th century Ireland.